You weren't coming back, man. I was in the neighborhood. Lad, stay in the neighborhood. Oh, Butch, Mako, come on over. This is Mr. Benton Partley. This is Butch Vidal and Mako Dorset. They just came up from South America a week ago. Hi, Hi man. <laughs> he looks like a cube, but he's really a love. And he's a brother of a big, fat genius, too. A real scientist, no kidding. Oh, the baby doesn't like being called the brother of a genius. You're a genius, too, sweetie, in your own way. Don't put it on the wood, cats. Ben and I want to talk. Where is it? Cool. I don't know why, but I can't stay away from you. <laughs> why fight it, man? That's why. Half the time you're laughing at me, the rest of the time you're talking about my brother. Oh, you hate playing that second fiddle, don't you? Oh, honey, stay. I'm sorry. You take life too seriously, doll. It's just a great big gag. Play it for laughs. Like about your brother, for instance. Now, I've got a wonderful idea. Here we go. Sweetie, I mean, I've got ideas about you, not him. We'll talk about it later. I've got a change for the show. Bradley partly didn't look like a genius, but at 26, he was a scientist whose brilliance was a national phenomenon, already doing highly important secret research in a San Diego missile plant. Not on that floor. Miss Elizabeth, I love you. I was thinking of a sandwich all the way from the golf course, and you have it waiting on a tray. It's not for you. You never forget to eat. He always does. Uh, in that lab all day? Some people have to work to be a genius. You get more bitter with the years. I'll take this up a little, brother. Hey, I'll tell you what. When I get through work, I'm going to take you dancing. I'm a housekeeper, not a geisha girl. Well, I'll bet that's how you got started, sweetheart. Oh! Ooh, what are you mixing, small brother? A fungus? Hey! It's not cologne, I don't think. It's a bug killer. Miss Elizabeth wanted a bug killer that wouldn't settle to the floor and on furniture so fast. Big research deal, huh? Well, Miss Elizabeth also wants some food inside you. I've had some food. You eat it. Man, was I horrible on the golf course. Lost 20 bucks to Doc Rogers. Half my entertainment budget shot. Let me lend you some dough. Mm, should say not. Why should you bail me out? Because I play bad golf. I wanted to lend you some money I wouldn't have offered. OK, lend me some. 10 bucks? I should have been playing golf anyway. Too much on my mind. Got a new project going at the plant. It's fantastic. Yeah, your picture was in the paper. It said it was big. Eight guys working on it with me, so they put my picture in the paper. Everybody knew it was your discovery? Let me tell you about it. This time, I think maybe I've really come up with one. No. What do you mean, no? No, I just don't want to hear about it, that's all. Well, why not? It's supposed to be secret stuff, isn't it? Top secret? Well, not so secret I can't discuss it with my own brother. You're a scientist. You know what I'm working on most of the time. What gives with you? Nothing. If it's a secret, keep it a secret. I just don't want to hear about it, that's all. What's so strange about that? You inhale a lot of that stuff you were mixing? I just don't want to know what you're working on. Well, it's no top secret that I'm going to take a shower. Kid. I'm all right. Better call Doc Rogers. What happened, kid? You grabbed the wrong bottle? No. Yeah, yeah I mean, I must have. Well, the temperatures didn't balance something. I'll be all right. 
Doesn't smell like the stuff you were mixing. <coughs> you take it easy. Let the doc give you a check. Come on. The wrong box. Commander Partley, the father of the two boys, called me the next afternoon. He was on duty at the Coast Guard Air Station in San Diego. Well, yes, I just read about it. I'm glad Ben wasn't seriously hurt. So, of course, I'll be right over. The commander was worried about the blast in the lab. He didn't think it was an accident. Well, if you don't think it was an accident, shouldn't you go through security channels? Well, I don't want to go to security with just a suspicion. I'd be setting up my own son as a security risk. Brad's doing important work. I don't want to jeopardize that. He'd never forgive me. What do you want me to do? You could find anything security could find. Well, I could look around. Well, you, you might keep me from making a fool of myself. What worries you about this, Commander? There's something cockeyed in my house, Dan, and I don't know what it is. My own house. My boys don't make mistakes in the laboratory. Well, I haven't seen Brad or Benton for several years. Well, you've got the run of the place. Same housekeeper? Same character. Miss Elizabeth, only more so. I don't know what to tell you, Dan. Lately, Benton's evasive, and Brad's taken it too casual, this accident, Miss Elizabeth. Well, look around. Hello, Miss Elizabeth. I'm Dan Adams. My memory is not that short, Mr. Adams. Commander Partley phoned and said you were to have the run of the house. Now, why would you want the run of the house? Are the boys at home? Only Benton, who's working, as you can hear, and nobody disturbs him when he's working. Well, I just wanted to say hello. It's a rule. When the typewriter's running, nobody interrupts. He may have to study harder than Brad, but he's just as smart, and he'll prove it someday. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll talk to him later. I'll just take a look in the lab. Ben's not typing in there, is he? In his room. Typewriter stopped. You interrupted him. No, I didn't interrupt him. Bye, Miss Elizabeth. Ah, hello, Brad. Hello, Mr. Adams. I haven't seen you for a long time. Miss Elizabeth said you were at the house this afternoon. I'm sorry I missed you. I wanted to have a little talk. Well, the talk would have been different then. Your father's worried. Well, ben said it was an accident. That was good enough for me. What's he experimenting with, rocket fuel? You smelled it too. 
couldn't miss it. Well, I should take this as security, but Dad trusts you. I'd hate to be taken off what I'm working on at the plant. And Ben doesn't really know what I'm working on, so there's no danger of leakage. It's just that... Have you a tape recorder? Yeah. I wanted to dictate some notes a while ago, but I thought I had a clear tape. I didn't. So I went into Ben's room. He isn't home. We both have recorders. That looked like a new tape. It isn't. Kid records everything, every place. Blues music, bird calls, Miss Elizabeth snoring. This isn't Miss Elizabeth. Oh, honey, I don't want to see you hurt. But how much warning do you need? I couldn't help you if I wanted to. Don't you want to be a genius like your brother? I don't have my brother's brain. Well, you can be a genius at other things, like uh, making money. I haven't any idea what he's working on. Look, these people I know, they could make even me talk. And a woman can stand more pain than a man. You know that. I'm going to turn you over to the authorities. No, I don't think so, sweetie. You think too much of your brother and your father. I know you, darling. <laughs> Take that to security? What'll it do to your work? Well, it'll take me off it. How much does Ben know about your work? Nothing much about this job. You gonna go home now? I should go by the plant. Well, go ahead. What about that tape? I don't want the kid to get hurt. Well, don't do anything about it just now. Wait till I talk to Ben. Thanks, Dan. Forgot it. Come in. Oh, hiya, Ben. Hi. I bother you for a minute? Well, I, I was working, but... Yeah, it's quite a gimmick. I'm not much of a conversationalist. But when I don't want to talk to people, it comes in handy. Up till now. Well, I don't want to talk much. What are you trying to do to your brother, Ben? What are you talking about? That phony explosion. <laughs> don't you think there was an explosion? Well, I don't think it was an accident. And I don't think anybody's trying to kill you or Brad. It had to be one or the other, didn't it? No. Somebody put a beaker of liquid on that Bunsen burner with a rubber stopper jammed in the neck of the beaker. Now, that rubber stopper is still in the neck of the bottle. I just saw it on the bench. What are you talking about? Think I tried to blow myself up? No. Scattered glass made a pattern on all four walls and the ceiling. But you didn't get a scratch. You got out of the way before it actually blew, didn't you? What are you accusing me of? What right do you have to come in my house, call me a liar? What are you trying to do to your father and Brad? Protect them, that's what. You think I'm lying? You think they're not in danger? I'll show you. You want proof, I'll give you proof. You don't have to play that Mata Harry record for me. I've already heard it. Who's the girl? How'd you get that tape? Well, you left it where Brad couldn't miss it when he went looking for a new one. That isn't so. This woman, she called me. You should have called security. Had Brad had lost his job, they'd have pulled him off it. You took the words right out of my mouth. Brad is going to security in the morning with that tape. And that's exactly what's going to happen to him and his work if you don't level with me right now. It's just a joke. That's all a gag. Why? Be because I was sick of hearing everybody talk about my brother. My brother, the genius, my brother, the wonder boy. Why can't you be a genius like your brother? For once, I wanted people to know that I was alive. So I started all this as a joke. Well, every joke has to have an ending, even a childish one. Now, where did you think this one was going to end? I didn't think that far ahead. I, I would have told them before anyone got hurt. How did this girl get in the act? She just went along with a gag playing spy when we talked on the phone. Who is she? I don't want to involve her. It's just a girl I know. How much did you tell her about Brad's work? Nothing. You think I'm a fool. Look, I want to talk to her. I want to make sure this joke dies right here. You can tell Brad about it. Why don't you let it die? Look, I've admitted to you that I thought it was childish and stupid. 
No, I don't want to involve her. You won't find her. I'm going to give it a good try. So my little joke backfired, blew up in my face. I didn't mean to get you involved, but this fellow Dan Adams might, might catch up with you. I didn't tell him your name. What is he, a detective? The best. Only he didn't see the joke. So you grew up a little bit today. You ready to grow up a little bit more? I'm stupid pulling a gag like that. That's the whole trouble, darling. You were joking and I wasn't. I want that information about your brother's job. You can it, Gabriella. Now you're a spy. It's worth a lot of money on the open market. Do you think I'd let you or any private detective follow up an operation like that? You've got to be kidding. Oh, then grow up. Why don't you face the facts of life? I'm a freelance agent. I'm part of a big operation. And there's a worldwide market for all the information we can gather. Do you think I just happen to be in San Diego? You think I just happened to put myself in your line of vision? I never told you anything that you could sell to anybody. You will. You've already talked more than you realized about your brother's job, and that's who we're interested in at the moment. The genius. If you're even in town tomorrow, I'll turn you in. Oh, no, you won't. Because every bit of information that I've gathered, I'll say I got from you. So you see, darling, we've got to cooperate. We're in this together. I'm not in anything. That's not the way it'll play to the police. And it'll have the same effect on Daddy and your big brother. Oh, look, Ben. Don't worry about that, Dan Adams. I'll get him off your back and mine. How? Commander Partly to wait at my house for me. I wanted to tell him the incidents in his own home could be written off as a childish prank on the part of Benton, a desire to draw attention to himself out of jealousy of his brother Brad, and that there wouldn't be any more of them. Uh, Dr. Mason, this is Dan Adams. Please come to my house immediately. Every second is important, Doctor. Who did it, John? It was meant for me. I heard the woman's voice. Could you recognize the voice? No, no, I... <laughs> Where's Brad? He's with his father at the hospital. Benton hasn't come back yet? He went crazy when he heard about his father. He dashed out of here crying, and I haven't heard from him. You say where he was going? No, he just ran out. Now what are you so shook up about? Just can't stand men who cry. I didn't think you'd go that far. What do you think I meant, sweetie, when I said I'd get Dan Adams off your back? That's what I had to hear you say. It was you. You heard. Only well, it wasn't Dan Adams you shot. It was my father. That's what I had to hear you say, what I had to know. So I could go to the police. Well, no matter who it was, you're not going to the police. You're in it up to here. I don't care what happens to me. But we care, Cat. Don't we, Mako? We care all the way. You think he means it? You think he'd do the law bit? Where to get? Hey, Daddy. Come on. 
on in, Millie. Uh, you're a hard cat to find. I got a little rumble on the street. I said that the big cat, Mr. Adams, well, he wanted a little cool conversation. Why don't you listen to something? Why don't you listen to this horn? Oh, honey, I don't want to see you hurt. Yeah, that's crazy. But how much warning do you I need? I dig it. You know who's playing it? What, are you putting me out? You want to be a genius like you're... Never mind the bongo drums. Who's on the horn? Man, anybody would know that horn. It's Butch Dell. He's playing down at the uh, 9 o'clock club, Mission Beach. Probably there right now. As they say on the street, you're too much. I'm hip. I'm hip, you're hip. Lock up and you leave, will you? There's food in the icebox. Hey, Daddy. The babe's name is Gabriella. That's his chick. You'll find Brad Partley's phone number in my index. You call him and tell him everything you told me. You are. Kind of like it. Dan Adams. We have a shooting acquaintance, Gabriella. Oh? I don't dig this conversation. But you dig Benton partly the most. Now, where is he? Let's go look for him. I'd like to see him myself. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have to look for him. Way. Didn't really need him, did we? Yeah, we needed him. You're going to see a lot of the police in the next few days. I'm sorry about everything, Brad. Did these two do that to him? I asked for it. I'm one of them. How's Dad? He's going to make it. He's out of his head. What's he mean he's one of them? Well, it's not as bad as all that. It was close enough. Police left to decide. You wanted to get your picture in the paper like Brad. I think you've got that much made. <laughs> <laughs> 